So, great news. I believe I'm the last speaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Jennifer Evans. I'm a data scientist at Clickbox. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. I'm also a competitive bodybuilder, a roller skate choreography, a choreographer, and an artist. I have several parrots, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today, as I describe how to use event data to enhance your analytic models. So what is event data? It's basically something that has a timestamp, and it's a record of something happening. Anything can be represented as event data if it leaves a data trail. So records of an occurrence, and it's usually very, very granular. So some types of event data are accidents, construction, road slides, avalanche, and road closures. And so you can think about it, it happened at some point in time, it's going to happen for a duration of time, and then it's going to change. And so you're going to get log data from these events. Kind of a business perspective of event data is maybe interactions of a consumer with your company. How are they interacting with you? What are their touch points? What are they doing? Some examples are upgrading the phone. So you can record the time, you can have an identifier who did it, and what they did. Drop the call, made a payment, add a line, check contract end date. And all of these pieces of information might be useful to answer the questions you might have, what you're trying to model, what things you're trying to discover about maybe what people do with your business. What we're going to talk about today, my data set, is bird data. Bird day data. So bird kicked finch, bit fatty, lost almond, found almond, vet visit are types of event data. So they have a time, they have an identifier, and something happened. And there's also something we're interested in. We want to find out what types of behavior lead the bird to have to go to the vet. The bird gets injured and goes to the vet, but why? So your data might look something like this. So log data, very granular. And you have different identifiers, you have different events. So a few things to notice is that we have um, sequence here, sequence of events. And that carries information, so it's important. You don't want to get rid of that when you do your modeling. You also want to maintain your time information, your duration information. How fast are things happening? How far apart are things happening? Is it still relevant? And one thing kind of deep into this data is we have the user experience of the bird. What is the bird's day actually like? So we can look at it on an individual basis. And we can group our data by sequence. And so we can see that fatty, Bird kicked Finch, got bit, found an almond, lost an almond. Bird kicked Finch, got bit, and went to the vet. And so we can see kind of from Fatty's perspective what her day was like. We can also see Finch's perspective. She got kicked, she bit Fatty. She stole an almond, she got kicked, she lost an almond, and she bit Fatty. And then Telus, of course, found an almond and had a very good bird day. So we have a sequence of events. and. We have events, which we can model, but we also want to look at the sequence of events. And so we can say that probably bird kicking, finish, and getting bit is an important sequence to maintain. Also, we want to notice that for Finch's little bird journey, that getting kicked and then biting fatty also occurs, and it occurs twice, but one of those occurrences is indirect. And so we don't actually want to lose that information in sequence either by looking at just consecutive events in the sequence. So we want to think about maybe indirect sequences as well. And so when you start to model this, oh, and for those who think that bird kick is this ridiculous thing, if you search on YouTube bird kick fatty, you can actually see a video of fatty bird kicking tails, which is <laughs> worth watching. And I'll put a link on the meetup. <laughs> So when you model your data, this might be what your analytic data set starts to look like. So you have events, and you have your identifiers, and then you have the number of occurrences of that event for your, for your sequence. We have this bird satisfaction score after our events, which is a uh, ranking for what their bird day was like. So Tails had a great day, he has a rank of 10, or satisfaction score of 10. Fatty, of course, went to the vet because she got injured. She has a score of one. And so you might want to include your BS score into your modeling effort. Also, perhaps you want to include your subsequences. And just, you know, you can have your count of indirect and direct. 
Now, you're going to have an explosion of data when you do this, especially if you have large log data and large data sets, so you might want to do some type of pre-processing to determine what variables or combinations of variables or subsequences are actually relevant and important and going to help you determine what behaviors are leading to the vet visit. And then you, of course, can feed the data set into your model, your algorithm, whichever one you choose or you're interested in, and maybe be able to learn something. So I picked the R part decision tree because it gives you segments, and so you can start looking at behavior patterns. Some additional variables you might want to include would be maybe some segmentation variables, such as the age of the bird. Maybe younger birds are more likely to get in fights. Maybe you want to include their number of most recent fights, so fights by some period of time. Maybe more violent birds are more likely to get injured. And maybe the weight of the bird. Maybe the weight of the bird has something to do with it getting injured. Small birds are more likely to get hurt. And so you also want to include segmentation variables and not just model the events. But some additional variables that you could be including is the event duration, duration between events, duration of drive-by segments, time of day by segment, number of events, number of events in subsequence, temperature, knowing the number of accidents, just kind of additional ideas, what you might be interested in, what could be helping. You might want to be modeling or trying to predict the drive time by different routes. So you just want to find ways to represent the information you have available to you. And you may not want to use some of the fancy algorithms. Maybe you want to do something where you can actually learn from it and understand something about what is going on. So you can be a little more selective in your, um, your data setup. So minds think with ideas, not information. No amount of data, bandwidth, or processing power can substitute for inspired thought. These are the birds. This is Tellus, Fatty, and Finch. We call them Tellus, Brainless, and Featherless. <laughs> And, you know, maybe next time I'll give a talk about the bees. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have questions, feel free to email me at jennifer.evans.clickbox.com. And I just want to give acknowledgement to Ken McGuire and Robert Bagley. And happy coding. <laughs>